Welcome to Try Not to Overthink It, where we explore the intricate landscape of mental health, well-being, and everyday life. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. And I'm Khalil. Join us as we dive into insightful conversations, expert pers perspectives, and personal stories that shed light on the various dimensions of mental wellness. Rather, you're seeking guidance, inspiration, or a deeper understanding of the human mind, this podcast is your space to engage, learn, and navigate the journey to a healthier and happier self. So today we are going to talk about satisfaction versus edification. This is one that has been on the ledger for us to talk about because it is one of Unique's favorite topics. She has mentioned it in several of our past episodes. If you have not watched those episodes, please go and watch those episodes. Um, but today we're going to actually unpack this topic and actually get into it. So do you, Unique, would you like to start us off? Yes. I, I can. Um, <laughs> I will, I guess I can start us off. I can define what it is because, you know, I say a lot of things on this here podcast and people will probably be like, what in the heck? So satisfaction versus edification is best described when talking about food. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So picture yourself very hungry. I'm talking about mm -hmm. like at the point of hanger. Mm -hmm. And most mm -hmm. of us want to uh, conquer that hunger quickly or just get mm -hmm. rid of that feeling. Because when you are hangry, the feelings that come with it are not nice when you're down in that valley. And so mm -hmm. to do that, most of us will grab something quick. When we grab something quick, it satisfies the need of fulfilling our hunger and desire, right? Snickers has given whole campaigns on if you're hungry, you know, you're not yourself when you're hungry, grab a snicker uh, because it is satisfying, right? A nice cold beverage on a hot day is satisfying. But then the difference is once you come down from the sugar high, once you drink the last drop of your drink, you still want more, right? Mm -hmm. It satisfies you for a point, but you want more. And so when you think about, oh, you want to consider what would be edifying, right? Long lasting. So you paint the picture. I was just looking at food before we got on this podcast today. We got to really paint the picture. Talk about mashed potatoes with gravy, a, you know, a meatloaf on the side with some fresh baked rolls, you know, the ones that you got to knead and let sit a little bit, them fresh yeast rolls, mm -hmm. right? Some freshly brewed sweet tea with extra sugar inside. We down south right? now. Hey, she's the hitting water, on some. Water on top of the, the yeast roll, okay? Fresh green beans that you have to like cut the tips off the side of them bad boys. It might have a little turkey neck up in there just to mm -hmm. give it the extra. April. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nobody, but nobody is hungry an hour later after eating that. You're going to go to sleep and wake up still a little bit full. That meal would have edified you. That cannot equate to a Snickers, ladies and gentlemen. That there is edification. It will sustain you through a few seasons, right? A, a, through a few sleep cycles, you still won't be full, mm -hmm. right? You won't wake up the next day, still on your mind, telling the people at work the next day, yo, let me tell you what I had for dinner. Because you've been edified. Nobody ever brags about the snicker they ate the day before. <laughs> nobody so when we take it out of the context of food there are times in our life when we meet people or we're in particular places that are satisfying they meet a need they may be something that's immediate they're quick they're easily accessed right those things will leave you wanting for more but then there are other people and places that will be edifying when you have encountered them, your life is changed forever. And it's something that you brag about or talk about for centuries to come. Wow. So that's wow. my definition of satisfying versus edifying. Well, I like the fact that you started to talk about relationships, right? Um, you know, when we 
think about the word edify, I automatically think about Apostle Paul, what he was saying to the Corinthians about them speaking in tongues and speaking in languages that are unknown to people who are in the congregation. And, you know, the reason why they were doing this, some of them were doing it for pride. Like, look what the Lord has given me. Look at this gift I have. Um, but it wasn't edifying to the church, meaning it served no purpose for improvement because uh, <laughs> edifiers prove you, uh, improve you in some way, whether it be intellectually, morally, you're supposed to gain from it, glean from it and be wiser, be better. Um, and, and the funniest thing, when we talk about relationships, uh, you know, if this relationship, you just wanted something to satisfy you quickly, um, whether it be a friendship, a lover, um, um, a, a coworker who you're trying to build a relationship with. All right. If the relationship just satisfies you for a temporary moment in time and it's not edifying and you're not growing in this relationship, well, then that person, as we would say, um, is just an acquaintance. All right. Um, Right. They're a snicker bar. Let, let's, they're just they're a snicker bar, right? So I, I like you said it's equated somebody to candy bar. We're <laughs> gonna be moved by Snickers. So look, but we're not gonna take this. If you can just breathe it on. Yeah, it just be a, <laughs> hmm. and that's all you but the funniest thing is what uh Unique said is we have to really beware of this relationship because if we're just taking someone who's only supposed to be there temporary into the next season and we're still not growing from this relationship, there's nothing edifying, then you'll continue to be pulling this person along with you through your journey. Um, and that's where I'm at with it. You know, I want somebody who is going to add on, going to help me build, help me improve as a person, as a human being. Um, and, and, you know, in, in all intents and purposes, I hate to use um, the word like, oh, they're just an acquaintance or so, or they were just for a season. I don't want to just throw those cliches out there. But when you're working in your purpose and you're walking in your purpose and you're looking um, to be better than you were yesterday, um, I, there's no way I'm going to allow myself to stay in a relationship with someone who was just for a temporary fix for me because they were just satisfying for me temporarily. Like, now you use food intentionally, right? Like Roger said, am I really comparing people to food? Yes, because I think we can all, that's like a great equalizer. Everybody eats foods, right? right? We do. Um, and I think that a Snicker bar has its place. If you're looking for some quick sugar, right? Like quick motivation, that definitely has its place. I don't think that acquaintances are bad. Right, uh -huh. meeting people who can help elevate you to that next level, or meeting people who can give you some different perspective, they have a place. The place uh -huh. is just not in a space to edify you, right? right. This yeah. relationship is not edify. I can't make this something that it's not. You were given to me for a particular time for a particular assignment to meet a particular goal. You not a lifetime connection, and that's okay. Yeah. There it is. Absolutely. You, we, we, I'm not talking about you for centuries. Mm. But I'm not. So what happens to that person, um, RJ, and, and you might want to jump in, that drags that person who was only meant to really be that sugar rush for a temporary mm -hmm. sugar rush or help me through something temporarily into that next season and keeps pulling and dragging. Doesn't that person become dead weight? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they become dead weight. I think that for That's a cool. lot of us, I, I think that for some of us, what we tend to do is we tend to keep things past their expiration date. You know, like Whoa. a lot of us will have, we'll, we'll have clothes that we don't wear or that, that we can't, oh. e that we can't even fit. Or we will have, you know, like for me, I've been the same size since I was in high school. So I got, I got jeans in my closet right now that I, that literally since i had i had since i was in high school that was over 10 years ago i can still wear, i can still wear those jeans donations you know but you know I, I say that to say this like when you look at uh satisfaction versus edification you're actually looking at things in in categories so you are breaking things into categories of needs 
wants, and desires. Things that are satisfying fall into the category of wants and desires, whereas mm-hmm. things that are edifying fall into the category of, of, of things that you need. You know, I need to be an honest person. I need to be steadfast and have integrity. I need to be trustworthy. I need to be, you know, somebody that is worthy of of, of somebody submitting to and following. But do I need for everyone to like me? No. Do I need for everyone to be shouting my name and screaming my name? No. Do I need to be loved by everyone? No. You know, like we, we sometimes we confuse the, the where things belong in the category. And I never really paid attention to that until um, Cherie, who's been on the podcast before, uh, when we worked together, she had in her office uh, a chart about needs and wants. And so mm-hmm. money, money was a want. And so we, we talk about it. And I'm like, what is that for? And she's like, oh, that's for my clients. And I was like, okay, so why do you feel like money is a want? She said, because you don't need money. And I was like, yes, you do. And she's like, no, you don't. She's like, you, you want money. It's nice to have money, but we confuse, you know, what we need. Needs are what we, what is required for us to be able to survive. What's required mm-hmm. for us to be successful in different spaces of our life. Whereas things that are wants, their accoutrements, their accents, their additions, it's nice to have them, but it's not things that you particularly need. And so going back to what you were saying about relationships, some relationships are, you know, they have a, they have an expiration date on them. It's good to have certain relationships, but do I need certain relationships? Now, depending on the season that you are in your life, depending on the cycle that you are in your life, depending on the the circle that you find yourself in or the phase that you find yourself in in life, certain relationships, they expire. Right. Friends that I had when I was in, friends that I had when I was in high school were not friends that I have now as an adult. Because we, the, the relationship expired and we became different people. So... Right it then gets to a point where you're trying to square a peg into a circle hole and it just don't fit. Yep. Mm. Yep. I think that's important what you're saying. Like just identifying needs and wants. Everybody's needs and wants are going to be different. Right? Exactly. Things I might need as I'll use myself as a business owner. Me being a business owner are different from a person who's an employee. Right. Needs are a lot different than someone else's. Where my employee may be like, "Well, I don't need money. I, I need other things." I mean, as an employee, as an employer, I do need money because I got to yes. pay these people. Pay you. <laughs> yeah, different. My needs are a little bit different, and I think when we give ourselves permission to be different, that kind of helps us to understand and expound on our wants and needs and evaluate our relationships, right? Where this person, I think my mom used to always say, just because someone's your friend doesn't mean that you're their friend. Oh, wow. Right? So I mm. might, my priority, I might be here on this person's list, or I might, I might be down here on this person's list, and they're up here on mine. In order, I have to expect know that if I'm at a lower priority for them, what they're giving me is going to be a lot different from from what I'm giving them. So I have to reprioritize and say, oh, okay, it doesn't mean I'm not going to give them anything, but I have to be able to assess what I'm giving to that relationship is a lot different from what I can expect from it in return. Right. And I need uh-huh. to weigh the risk, the risk to value benefit. What you just said was a mouthful. Um, I can't cut that because what your mom said was almost like uh, this. That's transformative. All right, can you say that again? About the so yeah, my mom was really intentional about training us how to have friends and build relationships, and so she was always telling us evaluate how a person shows up, for you. evaluate how you're showing up for that person. And if you're noticing you're the only one giving and doing and showing up, you need to consider, is this person as good for me as I think so? Or do I mean the same? Do I, I mean to this person what they mean to me? Right. And if they don't, right. evaluate that thing. 
she didn't say cut them off, but she would tell us you need to really behave accordingly. And so when we're talking about edifying versus satisfying, okay, this person, they satisfy me in this way. And so now I just need to have them in this space. I, this is not somebody who I might bring home to meet my family. This is not somebody who mm -hmm. I am taking extensive trips with or I'm making long-term plans with. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Yeah, right. And that means a lot to me because uh, I think a lot of people who did not get that knowledge at a younger age, right, maybe putting themselves in a situation where a relationship was satisfying for a certain amount of time or that person was good for them at that point in a certain amount of time where you might have needed some extra motivation and they were motivating you or like I said it was an old co-worker you guys were hanging together but uh if you're operating under uh, uh that transformative type of change in your life right where you wanting more out of life you're wanting to work on yourself and you want to achieve more out of life and that person is not coming with you all right they're not mm -hmm. on that same a uh, uh, mission that you're on, all right? I'm not saying you can't be friends with that person. What I'm saying is eventually, all right, you might have, you might see that you've moved past where you all were at at that moment in time five years ago, mm -hmm. all right? Especially if you're working for that transformative change. I know as a therapist, I'm an agent of change, right? Yes. So when I see people, all three of us here should understand where I'm coming from. When I see people, all right, and they're stuck, all right? And, and some of them are languishing in this uh, uh, area of, of something that, that's got them caught up and they're stuck and I wanna help them move forward. Sometimes we have to evaluate, like your mom said, uh, their friendships, their relationships, some of the things that's going on in their life. And it's funny to me because once they start going uh, uh, through who they're around, Right. Uh, and, and they're telling me about some of these things that they do with these people. I'm like, hey, are you sure that's who you want to be with when you go to right. this stage in life? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's my difference when, when when we start talking about satisfaction versus edification. Like you need to be able to improve me. Uh, like uh, RJ said, are, are we building character, honesty, trust, integrity? What, what are you helping me do? I mean, so it, to me, like with satis satisfaction versus edification, it, it is not, it's, it's applicable to all facets of your life. Cause you can, the same categories I used earlier, you can apply that to all facets of your life to, to daily activities, yep. you know, and I have this conversation with my clients all the time in regards to like solid decision-making because mm -hmm. for me, you know, my primary job is you know, dealing with the clients who are, you know, providing interventions and, 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 and providing services to the clients who are seriously mentally ill. And we bring the services to the clients out in the community. So a lot of, a lot of the clients that end up on my caseload or, or end up sitting in front of me or standing in front of me, um, they tend to have had a, a, an extensive history of up and down, up and down, up and down, consistent compliance, you know, compliance with treatment. Some of them will have issues with compliance. Some of them will just choose to not be compliant. Some of them will have issues with the law, all these different things. So for me, one of the things that, you know, again, you put these things in the categories, you know, I, because my goal as, as a provider is to develop independence. You know, if your whole pro, your whole, your whole, you know, journey on treatment is contingent on Objective. being, yeah. you know, being, being with me, that's codependency. Right. I'm trying right. to establish the skills necessary with you to where if I die, God forbid I die, I get called to the upper room or, you know, God forbid sucked into hell or, you know, I, I fall and bump my head and I lose my memory and I got amnesia, you know, you need to be able to be successful. Right. Yeah. So right. Yeah. we work, we work on these real world skills of, you know, decision making. So if you know that you have X amount of dollars after you pay your rent, your utilities, your phone bill, you, you prioritize all your needs. Because mm -hmm. for some of our clients, you know, I, I, I literally work with them every month financially to establish a budget because that's something that as normal, sane, rational thinking people, we do that. We pay right. bills. Yeah. So 
again, you are you are an adult. Yes, you have a mental illness. Yes, you are seriously mentally ill. You have been hospitalized, gone to jail, and voluntarily committed. But we still got to focus on those things. So if you're wanting to live independently, these are things that an independent living adult does. So, yeah. you know, the way we do budgets is needs. I mean, you know, needs, right. wants, and then desires. We need to pay rent. We need to pay utilities. Mm -hmm. We need to pay phone bill. We need to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. Then from there, whatever's left, let's, you want to get a PlayStation? Let's get that PlayStation. You want to get right. a new TV? Let's get that TV. You want to get some new you want to get some new shoes? Let's get them shoes. But needs, yeah. wants, and then desires. You know, when right. you start to kind of put those things into the categories, you know, such as needs, wants, and desires, it keeps you from finding yourself in bad in bad spots because you you you've already assessed the importance of those things. Um I know in a previous episode Khalil talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, it's essentially the same thing. You're categorizing, categorizing things in the hierarchy of their importance. Most of us, like I said, like I was saying earlier, most of us, what we tend to do is we tend to mix and mash and confuse the three. Mm -hmm. We think that needs and desires are the same thing, and they're not. We think that wants and, and needs are the same thing, and they're not. They're they're. They're different words for a reason because they mean different things. And because they mean different things, that means that there's a different connotation associated with them because they're different. Right. So again, like I said, it's not just applicable to your 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 interactions, your 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 relationships. It's applicable to all facets of life. For me, I I like to work out, you know. Not all the time, but I work out enough to where, you know, I can eat whatever I want and not be, you know, super big because I definitely like to eat junk food and I like to eat candy and everything. But at the same time, it's working out. As good as he wants. Yep. Working out is working out as a need because the want of eating whatever I want is there. So they, right. they offset each other. And so for a lot of us, like I said, we will mix and match them together because we're not taught from a very early age how to prioritize things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to put things in the appropriate place. And that's not mm -hmm. even just with the with the with behaviors. That's with people. We yeah. will have people in the wrong category and we'll have someone who has no business being being a, a need in the need category when they should be a desire category. Wow. And so when you have mm -hmm. when you have people in the wrong categories, they sow discord and chaos and disrepair all through your life because they're in the wrong you're expecting the wrong things from the wrong people. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 that's the thing, like people who are supposed to be in the need category are going to be the people that are going to be mentors. They're going to be the right. people that inspire and empower you. They're going to pe be the people that pour mm -hmm. into you. They're going to be the people that push you to be better, that want you to be better, that invest in you being better. Yep. Whereas the people that we desire, you know, they're not going to be in the need category. But we will sometimes have the person that we desire be in the need category. And then we're kind of confused as to why things are not going the way that they're, they're supposed to be going. Because you have the, you're, as Unique calls it, uh, getting the wrong thing from the wrong store. Well, you might believe you need that person. Uh, mm -hmm. If you desire that thing or that person, let's say that person, all right, and they're so beautiful, you love them, you love the way they walk into the room, they light the room up for you, mm -hmm. and you believe in your mind that I need that person. Um, mm -hmm. When I have that person around me, they make me feel better about myself. All right, my self-esteem is raised when I walk in the room with that person. Uh, there's, so, there's a lot of reasons why, RJ, people would think they need and it's really just a desire but uh yeah rj what you were talking about makes a lot of sense because i think people do confuse the needs with the wants and desires um and you might desire that person um and and really uh that might actually not be love you know what i mean uh, especially um if, if and i hate to say that some people are so um you know, uh, superficial, a desire to be around a beautiful woman or a beautiful man. And, and that, that right there becomes a need for them 
but that's in their mind. Uh, I need to be around someone who looks like that or, or who makes this much money. Really, that's the desire. And it, and it has something to do with your self-esteem and self-worth. I think we have to really define everything has its own purpose. Mm -hmm. Needs are important. Desires are important. And so are wants. They're all important. But when we sit down and look and like we're talking about really flesh out what the difference is between, then we have a clear understanding of how to meet each of them, right? Okay. I may say because I have low self-esteem, I desire people who are going to put me up. So I need to develop a higher sense of self-worth, right? right? <laughs> Excuse me. And so I might want, I, I might want a lot of friends. Why do I want a lot of friends? Because I feel lonely. Oh, yeah. I need to work through my feelings of loneliness. And right. so when we fix, when we prioritize our health and wellness, and this mm -hmm. goes back to that edification versus um, satisfaction, uh, satisfaction, when we look at, okay, is this just satisfying me or is this edifying? Because when we look at things that are going to edify us, it may not make me comfortable. I tell my clients all the time, if it makes you comfortable to do it, it's probably because you're lying to yourself in some type of way. Well, when you're, 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 looking you're, to make you're settling changes, at that point. Yes. But that's still a lie. When you settle, you're lying. Not too so. Yeah. yeah. Right? So when you are looking to make real change, real change requires you to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. When you ain't, I don't know if any of y'all have cooked while you're hungry, that is painful. <laughs> Uncle. I'm hungry on this episode today. But that makes you uncomfortable. But the meal that you get after that thing, boy, it's going to be so much more. When we talk about sacrificing and we, when we talk, tell our clients to come, the things that we're working through, we're talking about doing what's on the treatment plan, um, getting rid of people, places, and things, really changing the way, reframing our thoughts. Those are hard concepts. Setting boundaries. Yep. It's mm -hmm. hard. Facts. Being truthful. Right? People are like, oh, I'm not a liar. You're not a liar, but you sit here and tell yourself you're unworthy. That's a lie. Right. Facts. Oh, you're not a liar, but you sit here and say, well, my parents should have been more. No, they shouldn't have been more. They were exactly who they were. That's a lie. And so it's comfortable to say, woe is me. Oh, they did me dirty. But it's uncomfortable to say my parents weren't the parents that I needed. But now I'm able to give myself what I need to be the best version of me possible. That's an uncomfortable thing, and it's hard. And so when we're talking about satisfying versus edifying, when identifying wants, needs, and desires, first I have to see what my needs are rooted in. Mm -hmm. Are my needs rooted in truth and growth and incremental change, or are they based in keeping me comfortable? Because if they're based in keeping me comfortable, I am only seeking satisfaction. And sure. that is temporal. Yeah. You will you will need something else very soon. Your desires yep. will be surrounded on things that are superficial. Your wants will be just surrounded on things that are only going to meet your needs in the immediate, not long term. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I just had this conversation with one of my former employees, maybe a couple, about a couple months ago, you know, she put her notice in, was telling me that she was leaving, da, 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 da. And so I asked her, you know, why are you leaving? Well, you know, this job's going to pay me more money. It's like, oh, okay. Mm. And so like, my thing is, like I told her, I said, you know, this is just me being real with you. If you are going to jump job to job to job to job to job, based off of how much money they're going to pay you, there will never be a job that's going to pay you enough money. Yep. Mm -hmm. there, there is never going to be a job that's going to pay you enough money. And so, you know, the thing is, like, when it comes to, like, what Unique was saying about doing what you have to do now so you can do what you want to do later, it, right. it, it is, you know, with edification, edification is fulfilling. It's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And the same, the thing about all things that are fulfilling, they're not always going to be great feeling the entirety of the journey. I mean, when you ask anybody right. who's, who's ever gotten, gotten into the best shape of their life, 
they will tell you at the beginning it sucked. Having to eat right, make make you know better life decisions, you know, not giving up certain habits, going to the gym consistently, walking, working out. Like it sucked because again, it was outside of what was comfortable for them. But mm-hmm. when 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 they got through the journey, through the struggle, through the trials and the tribulations, they made it out to through the other side, they were amazed at what they were able to accomplish. Yes. And they also appreciated what they accomplished because of the hard work, the dedication, and the consistency of effort that went into getting to that end point. And I think mm-hmm. that for a lot of us, because for some of us, we are comfortable be- being comfortable. Me, yeah. I can tell you, me as the, as the lazy king, you know, I don't like to do a whole lot of extra stuff or things that require a lot of extra energy. But I also don't like to, to lose and I don't like to fail. And because I don't like to lose and I don't like to fail, you know, because it's something in me as a man. It hit my pride. It hits, it hits different. It hits your pride. Like, it do something to you when you like, God dang. Like, this person is doing better than me. Like, it hits you. It hit different. Mm-hmm. You know, and so as a man, like your pride kicks in and you like, nah, I can't let these people or this person or this thing beat me. And so I will put forth the energy and the effort to to always, always, always find some way to win or succeed in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. Now, is that something that I that I want to do? No, it's not. But is it something that I that I need to do? Absolutely. And the reason why is because I have set, I have certain standards for myself and those mm-hmm. standards cannot be met just being a bare minimum boy. Mm-hmm. Being a bare minimum boy is going to get you bare minimum, bare minimum results, results you know, but if you trying, if you're trying to have things that you've never had before, you got to be willing to do things that you've never done before. Never you got to be willing to risk it all and, and, and bet win big, black, you got to bet all on black, push it all on in there. And 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 try to and try to make it shake. But for a lot of us, we are comfortable being comfortable. And so because we're comfortable being comfortable. Go ahead. When when you that's it. Yeah. When you exactly that consistent effort turns into discipline, right? When you mm-hmm. say I'm gonna go to the gym, even when I don't feel like it. Feel like it, right? That turns into discipline. That is something that we can look at the gym. We can look at anything in life. When you take those same principles and you say that, oh, when I used to have that discipline to do this and improve this one area of my life, it spills over without you even trying. You ask anybody who's been on a fitness journey. Right. Boy, they start cleaning up their credit. They start cutting folk off. They start <laughs> buying new clothes. They be like, they know. They be renovating their house. You're like, how you renovating your house, bro? Because that same level of discipline yeah. went into other things. They start to apply it to other, other things. things because they're like, oh, I saw how my mm-hmm. body changed. Never have you ever seen somebody get fit and still try to wear the same clothes. They just or, don't. Or smoke cigarettes. Or, yeah. or smoke cigarettes. You never you know have what I'm you saying? ever. You don't see it. Yeah, I, they, I, they, they be around people who who's still doing the things that they used to do. No, right. they, I mean, I, I, li- I listened to this guy, I, um, I follow him on Instagram. He was talking about when he does job interviews for his company, when he sees someone that comes in and they are, you know, rather than be man or woman and they're in shape, he said, he's more likely to hire that person. And he said, the mm-hmm. reason why is because that person has a level of commitment and a level of consistent effort that the average right. person don't have. Because if you got the time and energy and the consistency of effort and commitment to go to the gym, when there are so many other things that you could be doing, like watching TV, taking naps, eating unhealthy, eating junk food all the time, fast food all the time. But you as a person can block out all those distractions and everything else that may come your way that is not conducive to you being the best version of yourself. And you can do this. You, that means that I can, I can work with you. And yeah. I mean... For a lot of us, like I said, we are comfortable being comfortable. You know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to step outside of what I'm used to and what, you know, what, what feels good, what makes me feel good. You know, because even like going back to the example you were using earlier, Khalil, about relationships, 
we will, I, I've, I, you know, in my time of just the different jobs that I've had, you know, in my journeys of just being out here, living my best life, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet all types of different, different people. And I remember I was working um, in retail and I was working with this young lady and she would get out of a relationship and then immediately be in another relationship. Yeah, and it yeah. just was, it was just a repeated cycle. And so one day we were just sitting, sitting around talking. I asked her, I was like, why do you have such a problem being by yourself? Mm. And so. Making her think. That, that yeah. And so, so, I mean, so she was quiet for a good few minutes and it was awkward AF because I'm a person, I hate awkward silences. So I'm just kind of looking around. I start playing on my phone because it's awkward now. Right. But in asking her that question, she had never sat and thought on that. And so she said, the reason I have, a, I have, I, I think I have trouble being by myself is, you know, I don't like being alone. Mm. And so saying it out loud and me asking her that question and forcing her to process those feelings, like it hit different for her. So then it started making her have to reassess. Why do I have trouble being alone? Why do I not want to be alone? Because you end up getting out of one unhealthy, maladaptive relationship, jumping into another unhealthy, maladaptive relationship, and it's just repeating the cycle. So if you're doing the same things you've always done, you're going to get the same results you've always gotten. Right. And, yeah. and it's Are just... They... Go ahead. Yeah, that reminds me. Um, the psychologist uh, Virginia Satir um, I love a lot of her quotes when she talks about wanting to change and why people don't change. Uh, and uh, what she said is human beings have this um, desire to be able to want to, to to be able to want to predict what's going to happen. Right. So we're, we're comfortable when we know what's going to happen. So when we're even when we're in a horrible relationship, just like, um, you know, if, if any of you I know I've had a friend that was in a domestic violence uh, abusive relationship and it's kind of like you know at first she would use the kids and his excuse and then the other well i i don't want to be without him and it's so difficult to survive without him and then eventually uh, the abuse got so bad it was just like there was no more excuses for her to use and and in my mind i remember thinking that like she's just used to this because i look back at a lot of her relationships from the past always this abusive uh, uh subculture with her and her these these men even before she got married so mm -hmm. for me i'm starting to realize like a lot of people will sustain that misery because mm -hmm. it's easy to predict if i kick yeah. you i know you're gonna kick me back you know and yep. uh I'm virginia satir talking about that like people will maintain that misery because of the certainty of the misery and i'm like that's crazy i was like but it makes sense now that I'm older and I started understanding things. And it's like, well, in order to change, there's got to be a threat. That's what she always says. In order to change, there's got to be a threat. Something's got to come in to make you want to change. And that's crazy. I, I, and even though it's, there's truth to it, is when people are listening to this, I want y'all to understand. I want you to change because guess what? It's going to be better for you in the long run. You should mm -hmm. always be wanting more. You should always want to evolve. You know? But I get it. Human beings naturally are not comfortable. We fear the unknown. I get it. But I think you can manage your expectations, right? right. If you expect that something is going to be difficult, it kind of hurts less, right? Yeah. So you think about boxers. They tell them to lean into the punch. Don't like try to tense up and avoid it. No, nah, lean well, into you, it. Expect you roll, that thing you roll with the punch. Connect. Right. right. Don't don't try to dodge it because when you dodge it, that impact is going to be ten times harder. I've never boxed, so I don't. <laughs> but I could assume just basic science. You know, it creates more distance. When you're trying to dodge something, it creates more distance. And so when it finally lands, it's going to hurt even worse. It's the same thing in life. If we lean into the resistance, lean into the things that are most difficult, then we're able to kind of move like. Roger, I was saying, we're, we're able to roll with the punch. We're able to, okay, yeah, it did hit me, but I'm leaning into, I'm flowing with it. So your body's saying, oh, maybe, maybe it ain't that bad. Maybe this wasn't as, as big of an issue as I thought it was going to be. Maybe I am stronger than this. I am capable. And you're able to think of what's my next step going to be? 
What's my next month? What's my next hit? All right. So you're planning for, all right, so when this happens, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move like this. I'm going to do that. But if you are always living under the expectation that nothing bad should ever happen to you, there should be no, there's never a need for change. There's never a need for adjustment. Then you have this misconception that when it's time to adjust, when it's time to change, when it's time to grow, that something is being done to you and not for you. Wow. Change is for you. Growth is for you. Adjustment is for you to be the best version of yourself. You're not a victim of change. Right. You're not a victim of adjusting. You're not a victim of growth. But when we do not anticipate the needs, our, our truthful needs, then we fall into this dangerous place of thinking that life is supposed to happen on your terms mm. and not on the terms to make you the best version of yourself possible. Right. I like that. I like that. Absolutely. I mean, I think that for 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 all of us, you know, even with us being included on 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 this on this podcast, you know, we are never going to become the best versions of ourselves without going through some sort of resistance. Mm -hmm. The resistance is what is going to make you stronger. When you go to the gym and you are lifting weights, that is mm -hmm. what is going to help you develop the muscles. That's what's going to help yeah. you develop the strength, you know, yeah. the power. But when you go to the gym and you're not doing anything, you're not working against anything, regardless of, even if that's body weight, doing calisthenics like push-ups and sit-ups mm -hmm. and crunches, that is not going to, that is not going to strengthen you or shape you in any way. Mm -hmm. We all have to go through some sort of resistance. And when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, satisfaction versus edification, you know, the satisfaction, like I said, it, it feels good and it makes us, you know, think some kind of way but it's not going to shape us into the best version of ourselves. The yeah. things that are going to edify you are going to be the things like doing the push-ups, the sit-ups, the, the preacher mm -hmm. curls, um, the, the bench press. That's what's going to shape you into looking like, you know, somebody, you know, that's Mr. Olympia, you know, versus mm -hmm. somebody like myself that's just skinny. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm scrappy, but if one of those dudes get their hands on me, it's a wrap. But um RJ, what you were saying, um it, it, I didn't even think about this before, right? I remember as a child, you guys just made me have a flashback. I remember as a child bringing home a report card and my mother saying, Why does this say satisfactory on it, right? Mm -hmm. and satisfactory, mm -hmm. if you guys remember, because I'm older than y'all, if you remember. Mm -hmm. The satisfactory meaning that uh, the uh, basic requirements. it was the basic requirements for that class. And, mm -hmm. and usually it was between, hey, like a, a, a 69 to a 79. You had that well, like 10 point thing. Yeah, it was like a C. It's like a C minus. Satisfactory is mm -hmm. literally like a C minus or a C. Yep. And I remember my mom being upset and she'd be like, you didn't try hard. You just got satisfactory. All you do is show up and get back. You said show up on time. <laughs> you never do anything. Else. <laughs> I remember her saying that and being so disappointed. And so when we talk about satisfactory or satisfaction versus edification, that started to pop in my mind. Like, well, if it's just satisfaction or it's just sufficing for that moment, it's just enough. You're not getting any more. You know what I mean? When it's you a bare minimum boy at that point. Bare minimum boy at that time, you know, you're just doing the bare minimum. So we want outstanding, you you know, you want someone to be uh, trying their most excellent, you know, they, to be doing their best at what they're doing, um, mm -hmm. regardless of whatever it is. So, you know, I think that's what I just ended up and I don't want to bring things to uh, grades and marks and stuff like that. And then people have this perfectionist mindset, but I want people to understand what satisfaction means if you put it in context you know i i i definitely agree with what you're saying um like when it comes to things like that like we have to aim higher than just bare minimum we have to want right. more for ourselves than just the bare minimum because that's a, that becomes a mindset when you start to accept bare minimum as an option it become it slowly and steadily becomes the only option because you will you will start to gear yourself and key yourself into into a mind frame and a, and a thought space where 
this was enough to get me by, so I'm going to keep on doing just enough to get me by, and I'm going to keep on doing enough to get me by. And before you realize it, that's the only amount of effort that you are expending in anything that you do is just enough to get by. So again, like I said, being being uh, being a bare minimum boy or a C a C minus student, and so I had this this uh, this debate with one of my one of the one of the guys in the men's group at church where he was saying, "You should never push your kids to be straight A students," and so I told him I said I, I wholeheartedly disagree respectfully, and the reason I t- reason I told him I disagree with you is I do like I do agree that hey. Some kids are just going to struggle in some subjects, but even right. with you giving it your all, if you still pass, that's all I'm concerned about. But when you are just, I'm just going to do just enough. There's going to come a day where you're just enough. Isn't just good enough. enough. <laughs> you know, you, you, you may have just been having an off day and you sneezed and bubbled the wrong bubble on the Scantron, or you thought it was C and it happened to be D. And that right. just enough, because that's your thought process. I just, I, I just need to try do just enough to pass. Your C turned into a D or an F. Whereas if you're shooting for an A, and you put forth A effort, and you're just and your and your all your best was a B. You're, that's still good. Right. Versus, you know, giving C and D effort will eventually cause you to get an F. And so that's where like, and when I explained it to him like that, he was like. Okay, I see your point. You know, it's like about to an A, it's about performing at your maximum, p- providing maximum effort. Mm-hmm. I said it before. My mother always told us, "Your maximum effort might not equal an A, mm-hmm. but as long as I know you've given one hundred percent effort, whatever grade you would have gotten, you've earned it." Mm-hmm. Facts. So it wasn't the teacher failed me. The teacher gave me this. No, I earned this. I worked hard for this. I remember in college, I was in anatomy and physiology. I Indeed. hated that class. It was too Indeed. much, too much to remember. But I tried my best and I got a C. I think it's probably the first C I got in life. But I got a C and I, my parents saw it. My mom said, did you put forth maximum effort? I said, I did. And I worked hard for this C. She was <laughs> like, well, I ain't even mad at it. Because I did. I worked hard for it. It wasn't like I was just not showing up to class. Because I think telling kids, teaching them, you're not, your effort is not always going to get you the A. It's not always going to get you the best paying job. But it can get you the satis- the uh, not even the satisfaction. It can get you the edification of knowing you've given it your best. Mm-hmm. I've given it my best. And so whatever I got, I'm proud of it. I'm, I can mm-hmm. proudly say, yo, this is this is what I've created with my hands. And that's great. And it's well, an opportunity for growth. Well, that's the opposite of mediocrity or being mediocre and not trying. You know, what you're speaking on is someone who actually is attempting to do their best and put mm-hmm. forth maximum effort. And like you said, what your mom was talking about, we don't always... I haven't always gotten the job that I that I desired. Notice I said desire because I, it wasn't like I needed it, but I desired. Um, it, you know, th- those are things. Sometimes you might not get what you expected, um, and I had to temper my expectations in certain areas of my life. But the one thing that I didn't do is I didn't settle. Um, and RJ brought that up earlier. I'm, I, I never settle. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to put in as much effort as I can. And if I don't get what I expected or what was in my mind, then maybe that was just my expectations. But I'm going to still keep trying harder and I'm going to still keep trying to evolve and I'm still going to keep trying to learn. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, I'm, you know, for those of you who are hearing this, if you got to see, you got to see. But I just want you to know that don't be satisfied. Try to keep pushing. Try to keep pushing and developing the skills you need to do even more. you know, and if you've done your best, then you should be satisfied, but we want you to be edified. Absolutely. I mean, that that's the thing. And I mean, I think that for a lot of us, you know, pushing to be the best version of ourselves, surrounding us, surrounding ourselves with the best people, surrounding ourselves with the best activities and the best hobbies, um, you know, is what is going to allow us to step into that category of being edified, fulfilled. You know, and not just doing, you know, doing the things that are just going to make us feel good, the things that are going to satisfy us. 
Because I mean, and going back to Unique's example of the food, I'm a person, I like food. I like the taste of it. I like the smell of it. I like the seasonings. I like the, the everything about it. I'm not trying to waste my time just eating candy and expecting to be full off of that. Right. You know, when I right. sit down and I go to a restaurant, if say I go to Ruth Chris, I go to Ruth Chris and, and you know, to get steak and you bring me chicken nuggets or, or mozzarella sticks, we're going we gonna to fight. Sonic, can you bring you the Sonic menu? You, you, if it I go in, I go to Ruth Chris and you bring in me mozzarella sticks and, and chicken nuggets or, or fish sticks, we going to fight. I'm, I'm literally, I'm going, I'm, it's up at that point. Like I'm not playing. You, spent, you just spent 150 on one meal. That's what I'm saying. So you, so oh you really God. think, you really think I came in here to get that? No. So my thing no, is the same way. Give me salad and a roll instead right. of have a good night. I'm not. I'm not even. <laughs> look, I'm just gonna sit there and look. Just be looking like this. This is what I paid for. This right this here. Can't be it. This, this can't, can't be, be it. it. It'd be it. Not with my one fifty. <laughs> but, right. but but so the the same way that we will not go to Ruth Chris and expect, you know, the menu that we can get at Sonics. Why do mm -hmm. we tolerate and and accept that in other facets of our life? Mm -hmm. You know, people can't be in my life and be hanging out and not be contributing to me and not and not fulfilling me and not sustaining me. Well, we mm. accept that because we set the value. Ruth Chris has already set a value and a precedent of what they're mm. going to provide. Right. When we don't know our value, we don't know the, the, the precedent or what we provide, then we accept anything. Mm -hmm. Right? This goes back to our whole values episode when we're talking yeah. about establishing your worth and your value. You accept what you think you're, you're worth. Worth, right. Right? Ruth Chris, first of all, you're not coming to Ruth Chris looking like any old thing. Facts. They're not allowing any old cooks to cook in their restaurant. As True a statements. waitress or waiter, you're not wearing any old thing. You're not providing any old service because they have a value. When they, they know when they're about to plate that meal up, it's going to look a certain way. It's guaranteed to taste the same. It has the same value system, the same taste level because people expect that. But when we don't have clear values and clear expectations, then we allow people to give us any old thing. Anything. Now, you're not coming over here acting crazy like that. You're not coming over here doing that. I don't care who you are, family, friend, or foe. When mm -hmm. you come over here, you're going to act like you got some daggone sense about yeah. yourself. Exactly. I'll snatch anybody's child up. I don't care. I snatch people's kids up, people's spouse up. Hey, get it together. We ain't doing that over here, and that de definitely not today. Mm. I, I hold no qualms about it, and that's mm -hmm. because of my own value system, right? If you want to be in connection with me, if you want to be in my presence, there's a certain level of decorum that is required to be in the space with me, and we can keep key and we can cut up. But we're going to do it with a little decorum attack. Yep. We're going to do it like you got some sense about yourself. And if you don't want to maintain that sense of decorum or attack, you just don't want to be around me. And it's got to be serious. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be. I don't, I don't hold people. I don't give positionless or expectationless position. If mm -hmm. you hold a position in my life, there are expectations that come with it. It's like that in the real world. You will show up to nobody's job and earn nobody's paycheck if there are no expectations. Every job I've ever worked had a job description and yeah. had a list of responsibilities and expectations. I require the same for every relationship in my life. If you want to have a title, if you want to hold a position in my life, I am automatically assigning a list of roles, responsibilities, and expectations. If you do not meet them, you will not have the title. And it is just that simple. But people don't, they, they have these expectations. They have these roles and positions. Oh, that's my daddy. That's my mama. That's my cousin and them. That's, that's my best friend. But they ain't meeting up to it. Right. If your bestie ain't doing bestie things, she not your bestie. If your mama not doing motherly-like things, not providing in a motherly-like way, Biologically, she may be your mother, but position-wise, mm -hmm. right. she's acting like something else, and you gotta appropriately assign the title or the behavior. Mm. 
and you know that's the most what you're speaking to right now is when we're talking uh to people about change uh and we yeah. talk about who they're surrounding themselves with and i know rj's had these conversations at the mental health center you have family members like you said unique they might be biologically related to you but they're not fulfilling their their original assignment because if you're my dad then you need to act like my dad if you're my mom you need to act like my mom mm -hmm. uh it talks about it the mom acting like an older sister uh, or the dad act, acting like the child and, and the, the, the child having to give him money those things we need to check hey if they're not meeting their assignment in your life and they're not edifying all right i hate to, mm -hmm. I, I had to do this if they don't edify all right you're gonna have to think about what they're doing for you and mm -hmm. and it's not a selfish thing to think about what we need for ourselves that's not selfish mm -hmm. you know uh that that's you being a human being who does need things because there are needs versus wants yeah. versus desires mm -hmm. right so we are going to end the conversation there this is try not to overthink it signing out i'm rj i'm unique and i'm khalil and we will catch you in the next episode if you like what you heard we ask that you stop by the youtube channel because we can be found on YouTube is trying not to overthink it. Um, and if you stop by the channel, we ask that you like, share, subscribe, turn notifications on because we drop content like it. pretty consistently. Comments, you know, be, join the tribe, you know, you know, be a part of us. Um, but if you would prefer to listen to the episode instead of watch the episode, we can be found pretty much everywhere that you can get a audio file. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. Um, Audible, pretty much anywhere you can find an audio file, we can be located at, at the same name. Try, try not to overthink it. But this is us signing out, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Yeah.